so I may not be uploading as often, uh, and if my voice sounds a little bit weird, I, I woke up today with a dry cough, so I'm not feeling amazing, but I'll, uh, I'll still try and make a video for today. I'm not sure whether I'll be uploading as often, but... So today I want to talk about the PlayStation 5, because I haven't talked about next-gen consoles in a little while. And I want to talk about what my plan is as an Xbox user. I've never owned a PlayStation my entire life. You probably know where this is going, but I I think that's going to change after very after adding everything up over the past couple months and looking at it even with the Series S and all that. I don't know, dude. I think I think it's time I switch over. So as much as I'm impressed by the Xbox Series X and Series S both hardware-wise and price-wise, I think it's actually decently priced. I also like the payment model that they have. I think that's probably the best thing going for them. And Game Pass. I'm still a little bit disappointed. You probably were expecting this, but I'm still quite disappointed with the number of exclusives, or at least the lack of exclusives on launch, or at least in 2020 for these consoles. Like, things that make you want to buy a console. And I know that Microsoft's plan is not with exclusives and want to try and sell you a service that's how they're going to make their money back but even so when you look at what the competition is offering even nintendo and sony it's quite it seem, feels really underwhelming so let's talk about what sony is going to offer this year for exclusives so the big thing that everyone is talking about is the Miles Morales uh, DLC game thing. Personally, if I do get a PlayStation, I'm probably not going to get that game just because it doesn't really seem like something I'd be very interested in. I've never, again, I've never owned a PlayStation, so I could never play the original Spider-Man on the PS4, but I don't know. I don't really know if that's a system seller to me. Uh, I'm not really a bug snacks type person, personally. What I'm really excited for is Ghostwire Tokyo, and that is not an, that's not an exclusive, that's a timed exclusive, and it's a Bethesda published game, but it looks, it looks so much fun, like honestly, it looks, I'm so excited for it, and it's a timed exclusive on the PS5, so if I want to play it, I gotta get a PS5. Yeah, I'm so excited for Ghostwire Tokyo, like, I almost want to make an entire video about why I'm so looking forward to that game, but you know, I I do need to tone down my expectations because I've only seen trailers of it. Besides that, another game I'm really looking forward to is Destruction All Stars on the PS5. That seems like a good game to play with friends. I don't think I'd really be playing that by myself. It seems like a great party game, and things like that are really kind of pushing me towards the PS5. Now I'm sure a lot of these games, like Ghostwire Tokyo, you'll be able to get on the PC soon. And the PC is where I spend like 90% of my time when I play the games. It just, it's just how I prefer to play my games now. But some of this stuff is either a timed exclusive, which I hate, but not much I can do about it. I'm not changing Sony's mind there. Or it is a permanent exclusive for the PS5. And as much as I hate to say this as someone who really likes Xbox, let's look at what the Xbox Series X is going to offer in at least of what we know so far. And that could change. That could definitely change. So Microsoft's big thing is, of course, Halo Infinite, but that's been delayed a little bit. And so as much as I'm looking forward to that game, I'm, I'm still a little bit put off from what I've seen so far. I love open world games, but I don't know. I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be underwhelming just from what I've seen, but if it is absolutely amazing, then I'm so looking forward to it. I just don't really know at this point. Of course, though, I am going to be able to play that on my PC, which does have more power than the Xbox Series X by the time I'll be able to play that game. So it just kind of stands out of that. Why really would I buy a console to play it? Now, maybe for the controller, but I can probably just plug in my Xbox One controller into my PC. Besides that, when it comes to pure consoles, getting the PC argument out of it for a little bit, it's mostly timed exclusives for the launch. So the big one that I'm seeing is 
Yakuza Like a Dragon. I don't know if you've heard of this one. It's not that advertised too much, but it's like I, it's in the Yakuza series and I've really wanted, I have Yakuza 0, but I can't run it currently because of some issues with my computer. I'm hopefully, to, I'm trying to get that fixed. That's why I'm saying that by the time I the Xbox Series X is out, I'll probably be able to run games better than it on my PC. The thing is that, I don't know, Yakuza Like a Dragon, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to feel about it. It is a time exclusive, and it seems it seems different, and maybe I'll give it a try, but I, I don't know. It doesn't really stand out to me as much as some other games like Ghostwire Tokyo. Besides that, it's mostly third-party games that are coming out, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Dart 5, Gears Tactics, well, Gears Tactics isn't third party, but, and things like that. Mostly what I think a lot of people are going to be looking forward to is Watch Dogs Legion. That looks quite interesting, and I'm, even though it's not a timed exclusive, it lines up quite nicely with the launch of the Series X and Series S. And besides that, the only real launch thing that's going to be on the Series X and Series S is going to be Game Pass, which you are, if you do the subscription thing i think you get game pass included and i'm sure if you buy a series x or series s they'll probably throw in like three months free of game pass or something like that but besides that it's not there's not really much besides game pass and all of what i just mentioned i there's not really much of a reason to buy a series x and again let's move on to that pc argument if you have a pc there isn't much of a reason to buy a series x what there is a good reason to do, what there is a good reason to do though, is to get Game Pass on your PC. And I think that's what Microsoft's plan is. They don't want you to really, they, they of course they want you to, but I don't think they're really prioritizing. And I think that's where Microsoft's plan this generation lies. I think it's not going to be necessarily one based on hardware and hardware sales alone. I think it's going to be subscription based. How many people can get to buy Game Pass, Xbox Live Gold, all that. And so, well, probably Sony's going to sell more or maybe about the same as the Xbox lineup this generation, uh, Microsoft actually might make more money from subscriptions, which is a much more stable long-term endeavor. I don't know. That's kind of where I stand right now. I'm probably going to make more videos on this in the future when I'm not feeling so awful, like with COVID-19 symptoms. So... Hopefully, I'm going to try and make better videos, and I'm hope I'm trying to see whether I can pre-order the next generation consoles and me make a video about that. That might be cool, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to subscribe, like, let me know what you thought. And as always, see you. God, I'm... Oh my god, I feel...